So I want to start this by saying another beautiful day in Portland, but I will say that we have had really bad air quality for the last, I don't know, three to four days, and I've been stuck inside, haven't been able to ride. So I am taking my first ride in a few days and I got stuck behind a train and rather than wait for it, I decided to come over to the community garden that's on the way and do a quick sketch. So here's some of what's happening. There's a little sleeping bumblebee. I love to see those on a little dahlia. And some Ecosiana. There's a great sunflower over there that I might try to sketch. Sometimes when I can't find the time to do an, a building or an urban sketch, I just come and sketch flowers. And there's some apples up in the tree. You can't see them, I don't think, unless I really zoom in. But uh, this is a community garden outside of a Montessori school. And there's some grapes. Amazing grape leaves. Let's see if there are any actual grapes on there. Oh, they're inside. Look at that. That's beautiful. I'm looking for grapes and not paying attention to my filming skills. But there we go. We got some outside. Looks like somebody's been eating them. And a lot inside. And they went across the fence. All right. I'm going to pick something to sketch and get started. All right. So from that day, I sketched these sunflowers and a quick sketch of that bumblebee sleeping on the white and pink dahlia. And I did not paint those, but rather than paint that on camera, I thought what I might do is I had taken a photograph. So let me get the my reference photo of the bumblebee sleeping on the dahlia because I just think that is just so pretty. And um, wow, some fingerprints on my iPad. But that's what I'm using as my reference photo. And I am going to use my fountain pen and I'll put all the materials in the description below. And I think I'm going to go ahead and um, just get started. I started off with pencil, but then I thought, I've been doing so much with just marker and not drawing it in pencil anymore. First that, um, I'm going over a few of those lines, but I'm just going to do the rest in marker. So, I always do this little tap for myself when I'm editing so I know when I start talking again. But uh, what I wanted to say while I'm sketching this is that, um, just maybe talk a little bit about the thought process that I'm going through since I've been trying to sketch so much without penciling first, especially when you're out. Um, you don't, you know, like I've said before, I don't have the time to draw it ahead of time in pencil and then come back and do the marker if it's, if I want marker, if I want line and wash, whatever. Uh, so I, I just want to get it right. So what I've been working on for my sketching is looking at the flower or the subject matter as a set of shapes instead of, and trying to see it as shapes instead of what the object is. That is uh, a good way to well, I don't know why I think I can do two things at once, talk and draw. I can't, but. So if I see this as an oval instead of a petal, then I can clearly not do two things at once. So maybe I'll just keep going. So yeah, my eye, I've been training my eye to see things as shapes instead of whatever they're supposed to be because petals come in so many different shapes and a rose petal is obviously different than a dahlia petal 
And so if I think of this as a circle, or have most of a circle, and this is an oval with a tip on it, and just I just I'm seeing the lines and I'm seeing the shapes when I do this, and that's what I've been drawing. And I notice that uh, my drawings have definitely gotten better since I oops sorry little b uh, since I started drawing like that I've gotten more accurate and uh, better at whatever I've been doing. I think anyway it may not be obvious to some people but it's obvious to me that it's not as um, intimidating to okay so like this just this little piece goes like that and then there's a piece that comes out here and I don't have to be perfect this was supposed to be a sketch but um, since I'm doing it at home and on and for a recording I'm trying to get a little better but uh, I think I've got almost everything there's one more down here and I'm just gonna look at it as the piece goes down here and it's starting there and comes around here and closes like that and that's the dahlia there's my little bumblebee this is waterproof ink I think there's one little piece there that I wanted to do no it looks like I got it I might just close this one off that one off and then I'd like to put a stem in the stem is more of a burgundy color and it's just coming out here I don't want anything fancy just that and then for leaves I didn't really get much in my photo there are some buds but I didn't get those either so hmm do I even want to go there maybe I'll just do this since that's what I, I have to have a leaf maybe I'll just put some green in the background all right so again just um I'll erase my extra there just seeing things as shapes instead of seeing them as a flower because your brain sort of goes back to what do I what does a flower look like all right well there are you know millions of different types of flowers and maybe you don't know what a dahlia looks like so you, my brain doesn't say dahlia and dahlias are all different anyway this is a single dahlia there's some amazing double dahlias I've taken pictures of as I've been walking around and I plan on doing some more of that but and I'm working in my Stillman and Burn uh, travel journal sketchbook whatever the heck it's called I think it's called sketchbook I don't think it's a travel journal all right and pretty wet and work wet and wet so I can have a nice loose flowy pink sort of stripey this is called candy it's just a prima color that I have that I actually kind of like my prima colors even um, especially for sketchbook I wouldn't really use them in a big painting too much unless it's a specific color that I want but I like them very much for the traveling and Especially, I'm using the classics and they have some really bright colors. All right, I'm using the tip of the brush to get some lines in there. And I'm working wet and wet. And it's definitely whiter as I go out further. So I'll just try to do that lightly. And I feel like I've missed a couple of so let me move this around it seems like I may have missed a petal or two so let's whoa that's not I don't even know what in the world that is from oh, goodness. I even have clean water and everything all right let's try getting that out of there Just 
start with just a light wash of cad yellow. Alright, I'm going to work on the little bumblebee while it's drying. Um, I have been trying to set up my studio and I have to, I'm waiting. My daughter's supposed to be picking me up a table today. We'll see if she's actually going to bring it home. Um, and I have some video going, working on that new the new studio because it's uh, such a mess. Oh, let me um, get the door. Hey, sweetie. Hey, you. Uh, I'm going to need your help getting that thing out. All right. Um, I'm park a little further now. Okay. Let me, uh, give me one second. I'm recording, but I, okay. I, uh, I'll stop. I just want to get this bumblebee while I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm leaving that on here. Okay. Remember that song I used to sing you guys when you were little? Did I used to sing it? I think everybody used to sing it. Baby, bring home a baby bumblebee. And yeah. Smash it up. Yeah. I didn't smash it up. Hey, that's one of the things I mash up my baby bumblebee. No, you don't mash it. Yeah, no, you don't. Yeah, you do. No, it just stings you. Yeah, it was a stung thing, and then you mash it up as retaliation. That's why I get to my camp. <laughs> So I added a little bit of purple to my pink, and it's really just a, um, I don't know, it's one of the prettiest purple colors, I forget what, the, what it's called, but it's um, it's a straight purple, and I just to darken my pink up a little bit to add a little more to the petals, and the thing I love about painting flowers is when you do these strokes, you don't have to blend them a lot of times because they're actually there on the petals at least on this dahlia so I added a little uh, gamboge and carrot orange from Prima for the center to give it just a little bit of texture and dimension and I'm just darkening the centers here and I think that I'm gonna wrap that up and Post a video for the first time in a month. That little guy's just pink. He's just a light pink. Give him a little bit of color there. Right. Now let's do this. This is just a slight there. I took my finger and get some of that off. Little bridge right there. Well, I think that is about all I need. I just did a little extra little part of the bee that didn't have that, enough yellow in it and a little bit more on this background. I took it right up to the flower, but I'm only going to do part of it. I'm not going to do it up there in the corner. <laughs> 